Today on Red Sea Insights, we'll dive deep into light versus dark period and the relationship between intensity and photo period. What's safe and what's not? Stay tuned to find out. Hi, and welcome back to Red Sea Insights. In the last episode, we talked about the required light spectrum and intensity for your reef aquarium. Today, we'll talk about photo period, which is the third parameter of the reef spec lighting. We'll explore the relationship between photo period and light intensity and how it affects your reef. Let's start with the basics. Like every photosynthetic organism, corals need light, but there's only so much they can take. That means that the duration of the daily photo period is very important. Even the optimal amount of daily photosynthetic activity generates residual energy inside the coral that must be released. So they need a period of darkness just as much as they need the light. Our research has shown that to get optimal coral growth and coloration, light and dark period should be about the same. Also, the intensity and photo period are inversely proportional, which means if one goes up, the other must come down and vice versa. So for a 24 hour daily cycle, we recommend approximately 12 hours of light with an average PUR intensity of between 100 to 450 micromoles, followed by 12 hours darkness. Moonlight should also be taken into account as part of the total daily light energy and therefore should either be at very low levels or be included as part of the photo period. Our research did not only give us these guidelines, but it also provided an insight into what's going on inside the coral. We all instinctively understand that not enough light would limit coral vitality. But what about too much of it? Overexposure to light, meaning exceeding the maximum amount of energy that the corals can handle, has undesired effects. We're talking about things like the formation of free oxygen radicals and the conversion of unutilized light energy into heat, both of which cause the accumulation of toxins in the coral's tissues, and when they occur together, they make matters worse. What you'll see is the polyp and soft tissue retracting into the coral skeleton to reduce their exposure to light or paling of the soft tissue. These are the first signs of photo inhibition, and it's the coral's auto protection mechanism kicking in. Fortunately, these effects are reversible, but prolonged overexposure may cause long-term damage. If you don't have reef spec lighting, then when setting up your aquarium lighting, watch out for a few of the settings that can cause photo inhibition. The wrong light spectrum. Set your lighting as close as possible to the coral PUR spectrum. The right spectrum at a too high intensity. Avoid hot spots over 450 PUR at the water surface. The right intensity for too long a period. Apply the recommended photo period guidelines of about 12 hours of light and dark per day. So to recap, like spectrum and intensity, the photo period has a significant impact on the health and vitality of your coral. And a quick tip, if you want to enjoy your reef a bit longer over the weekend, no problem. Just increase the photo period, but make sure you compensate by reducing the intensity for a few hours during the day. Now, if you choose to use Red Sea's reef LEDs, you don't have to worry about getting it right. They've already been designed according to the spectrum and intensity guidelines we've discussed in this series. The photo period is up to you, but don't worry about overdoing it. Our ReefBeat app will let you know if you're about to go over the edge. So guys, this episode concludes our series about lighting. Let me know in the comment section below if you have any questions or suggestions. Don't forget to subscribe to make sure you don't miss out on our future topics on Red Sea Insights. Thanks for watching and happy reef keeping!